All right, so today's class, this class, is going to be on linking and syncing between your database, whether it's AncestorQuest or PATH, and Family Tree. All right? We, we've broken the class into two pieces. We're going to teach the more basic concepts today in the next 40 minutes, and there's another class tomorrow where we're going to cover some of the more advanced type of topics. For those of you that are PATH users, let me show you quickly how to get your PATH data into Ancestral Quest. Anybody here still using PATH? So let me, real quick, I'm going to open up PATH here. This is a copy of my database in PATH. And if I want to now work in Family Tree with this data, I would go to the Tools menu, down to Ancestral Quest. And right there, PATH just closed that database, told Ancestral Quest to open it. And there's your data, your PATH data, in Ancestral Quest, ready to start using the various tools we have to link and synchronize your data with Family Tree. That said, I'm going to get back out of PATH and I'm just going to go straight into Ancestral Quest. Ancestral Quest remembers the last data file you had open, so it, it's opening up the PATH database I just had open. But for this class, I'm going to work in an AQ database, so I'm going to close this one. And we're going to open up my AQ version of the same file. I'm going to just mention this very briefly. It, when you first start out, one of the first things you want to do is link up your own personal record with the record out in Family Tree. And there's a special way to do that. If you come down here to Link My Record, th that first will make you sign in. Once you log in to Family Tree using your Family Tree account, whether it's an LDS account or a, a, a regular Family Search account, Ancestral Quest actually reads your record. And this, so it finds out who you are, and therefore it can display this is your name, this is my name in this case, with my ID out in Family Tree. And down here, I, you tell it who you are. I've already done this linking process, so it knows who I am, but in your case, the first time, you would come in here and select your record, whether you're number one or 50 or whatever you are in your database. Once you find your record, and this button normally would say link, except I've already done this. So you click that button, and it then connects your record in your AQ or PATH database with the family tree record of you out in family tree. Um, so that's the process of getting your record connected. Your personal record for you as an individual. You only do that once on one record, unless you're married and your spouse may do that on her record. But So let me show you a couple of ways of linking other people in your database. We're going to save a more advanced version for the other class later on tomorrow. So let me go to my pedigree view here. Where did I find that button? Under the Family Search menu is your launch point for everything to do with connecting Ancestral Quest with Family Tree. So if you click the Family Search menu, you'll see a whole bunch of options here. That link my record was down here. A lot of what you could do is from this menu, but these we both have shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts to speed things up. And we even, even have some icons on the desktop that act as buttons. I don't hardly come here anymore. I just use the buttons on the desktop to do these things. But you could come into the menu to access anything to do with Family Tree. Okay? So I'm going to get out of that menu for right now. Notice this blue button with the tree and the gray button with the tree. When you first start out, you're only going to have gray buttons because those mean that you have not yet linked this person to the corresponding person out in Family Tree. Once you've linked them, it turns blue. That blue button means you've now connected your record with the corresponding record out in Family Tree. So depending on what you're doing, if you want to review an already linked record between your database and what's in Family Tree, you click the blue icon, or you could go to the Family Search menu and choose to review or sync the individual. With a gray icon, that means they're not yet linked. You push that button to start the linking process. All right? I'm looking for somebody here who's a little further distant from the living generations that we can do this on. Let me, just for fun, come down here to William Woodcock. And let me show you how to link a person. So I'm going to click the gray tree icon. Right now, Ancestral Quest is sending the family tree information on the person in my database. 
family tree is searching through over half a billion records and when they come back they say here's a list of people that might be the one you're after. The top one notice is a high likelihood the rest of these are low likelihoods. This one almost for sure is going to be your person. So what you want to do now is just click if, if you click on any one of these names it displays the additional detail down here. So I'm going to say let's take a look at William Woodcock the high likely candidate. We're now loading all the rest of the details from Family Tree here. Okay, so Family Tree has the same name we have. Birth. They've got more detail, but it looks like it might be the same person, right? Death. Pretty much exactly the same. Family Tree has additional details that I don't have. So if this is the same person, I can actually get more information, right? Let's just make sure it's the same person. Scroll down to the families here. My database does not yet have parents, so I can't compare that. I have a Hannah Stones, and Family Search has a Hannah Stones. Notice here the birth and death year. That's pretty well telling me this is the same person. The fact that these things match, this much of a relationship matches, I'm pretty well convinced. Sometimes you don't get convinced with that much of a looking. You, you've got to dig a little deeper. So you might want to click, for example, on this plus sign and take a look at the list of children in your database compared with what's out in Family Tree to verify whether it's really the same person. That always takes a minute to load extra people so it, it slows the process down, but it, it helps make sure you're not making a mistake. Okay, here we've got a list of the marriage information and family information. So now I can see the marriage recorded in my database compared with the marriage recorded out there in Family Tree. I can start looking at a list of all the children. When I've got these many children that are the same, same names, same birth and death dates, this is for sure the same person, right? You could, if you wanted, you could click on the name Hannah Stones and actually bring up her record side by side, your copy with their copy, to verify that it's the same person. The same with these children. Any ch child who is on the same line, you click on their name and it brings up a side-by-side. -side. So you, you can really drill down if you need to to get details. We're all convinced this is the same record, right? So I'm going to now click the box up here to say that one is a matching record. And because I've only got one matching record, I can now link this record with my record. Okay, for, for the recording, I'm going to kind of repeat that. He's asking whether if we link a parent, if it's also at the same time going to link other relationships, other relatives, right? No. <laughs> this is a two-step process. Right now, we're linking one person. This whole screen is all about just identifying the person and linking him. I will be showing you in a minute how you then go into a family sync screen where you can then say, I specifically want to link up this child that's on the same line and that child. You just go click, 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 and link them up. But that's a separate process that you'll do in a minute. Okay. First step is just we're dealing with one person. Um, so let's hit link here. By the way, if I look through other records from Family Tree and tried to compare to see if they are the same, if you find other records that are the same from this list, that means they're the same with each other, right? If they both match your record, then they match each other. If you check more than one, that means you can now merge those records out in Family Tree. And then you finally link your record to the merged record. But I'm not going to take the time to look through all these right now. We're going to say, fine, I've already decided he's my guy. Let's link him. Now, I always do a link only here. That puts the blue tree by the name back in the pedigree or family screen and then I click on that to go in and do a full review. If you say manually sync here, it will not only link them, but it will take you immediately into that screen, but it doesn't give you as many options when you do that. To get the full options, you want to do the link only, followed by clicking that blue icon. 
experiment with both of them, see which way you like. I'm going to do the link only, and we're going to proceed that. Okay, so William Woodcock, we now have a blue tree there. A minute ago, that was a gray tree. Yes. No. Th this is your data that you're messing with right now. At this point, yeah, whenever you send data to Family Tree, they want you to say why. But when you're doing something to your database, it's up to you whether you want to do things. We aren't going to require you to enter something there. All that happened just now, by the way, if I go in to edit this individual record, you notice in the bottom here where it has this ID? That's all we did just now. We, we analyzed things, made sure it was the right record. But in the end, when we said do a link, all Ancestral Quest did is it put the ID of that person here. So we now know who it is. From now on, Ancestral Quest knows right where to go to find that record. Um, it hasn't done anything else in the way of exchanging other data. If I now click on this blue tree, that now starts the process of reviewing your data again with their data. We just kind of did a partial review, but now you're going to have the option of actually exchanging data. Because it put that person identifier number in there from New Family Search. From Family Tree. From, from Family Tree. If there are some mergings that take place after that, uh, does Ancestral Quest have a way to keep track of which one? Yes. So, so, so you're asking if, if some of the people you link with later on somebody merges and the, the ID changes, right? One reason this screen comes up a little slower than I'd like, as it's coming up, it takes a look at all the relatives that you might use if you click here on parents and siblings or spouses and children, and it goes out and verifies that their, ID, their IDs are still valid. If during that verification process, while it brings up this screen, it notices that any ID has changed, it updates your database to the new ID at that point. So as we go through this, it has the latest IDs. So all the way through Ancestral Quest, sometimes it seems like it's taking a little longer than it should. It's because we're going through and validating the IDs that it's going to be working with. Um, so you're not working on old IDs. Okay, so on this screen, this is where you can now start actually exchanging data back and forth between the two systems. Um, oh, by the way, that last screen we were on, we found a match, right? If you had not found a match, if you were looking there through all the various people that Family Tree suggested to you and you said, you know what, I've got a new record. There was a button at the bottom of that screen that says, add him to Family Tree. If you've gone through and done your homework and searched and he's not out there in Family Tree, then you're free to just say, add him out to Family Tree and great. Family Tree now has a copy of that record. In this case, we did find him. Again, here you're looking at the details from Family Tree. Let's see. You know what? I might as well take this christening data and the burial data that I don't have. By the way, if you want to learn more about a piece of data, notice how the cursor changes when you hover over an item. You can click on that, and it will read more about that piece of data. You can go in and read a complete history of relatives of yours might have been changing it back and forth from this to that or whatever. This tells you who last updated it. If you click on that name, that will open it up and show you the email address if they have one. In this case, uh, apparently they have not allowed us to see their email address. If they've given a reason for updating that, you'll see the reason here why they did what they did. If there are any sources on that piece of data, you will see them down here. And then you can opt to go and synchronize those sources with your database. So anyway, you can come in here and learn a little bit more about the history of this particular item, and in fact, you can delete it. Notice the delete button? You can actually delete items from Family Tree. To do that, again, you, you, you click on the item, you verify it, you click delete, and it goes away. While you're on this screen, there's lots of cool things you can do. If you click this link up here in the link bar, That'll take you out to Family Tree and let you see how Family Tree shows this data. This will let you check for additional duplicates of this person out in Family Tree, where you could merge them if you find additional duplicates. If on that uh, birthday, 29 July 1972, uh, that, that person who inputted the Family Tree had put a document in showing the birth record, would that show on here? Yes. 
if, if they had connected a source to this particular piece of data, you would see a source icon sitting right here. It would look like a little briefcase. Our source icons look like briefcases. Whether you have sources or Family Tree has sources, if you see an, a briefcase icon on the screen, that means there are sources. And you can click on those briefcase, briefcase icons to see those sources for just that event that you click on. Down here, notice that we have five sources in Family Tree and zero sources in our database. I can click on this Sources button and actually go and look at those five sources, and then I can, I can bring those sources in to our database. That's something I'll cover more in the next more advanced class. Um, up here, you can, with this link, you can go out and participate in discussions in Family Tree about this person. Uh, you can go look at the full change history, everything that's been changed on this person out in Family Tree. And you can actually delete this person from Family Tree. I recommend you only use that as a oops undo. If you added somebody and then later on you realize they were already out there, you just hadn't done your homework, that's when you come in here and say, uh, let's get them back out because I just added a new duplicate. But don't just go out and start deleting people because there are probably other people's relatives and you're really messing up somebody else's data. So, so use that one with great caution. Notes. We can actually let you go in and exchange notes between your person and the family tree person. Um, I'm going to next show you spouses and children here. Notice I've already checked a few boxes to say I want to exchange some data. You can either hit save to have those move into your file or when you do certain other things it will first say hey I need to save this before we move on so in this case if I say let's go to children and spouses do you want to save your changes yes my file was just updated now we're reading the family members of the spouses and children Now I understand what you're asking. I, I, I wasn't fully following. This is your data in your database. This is the data out in Family Tree. If you feel like theirs is more accurate than yours, then you want to bring it over. If you trust what you have, you don't want to bring it over. Right. You can actually, you notice that little temple icon right there? That little temple icon allows you to examine in more detail. So I, let, let me click on that. That'll bring up a screen that lets you validate families. So this is what's in my database. I've actually got two spouses here in my database. They're probably duplicates of each other. Out in Family Tree, they only have one. They seem to be the same information. OK, so this is what I have in my database. That's what they have. If I want it, I check that box and say save, and that updates. That'll replace this 1935 with this 1878 one, okay? And I'm not ready to do that yet. I want to go home and spend more time thinking through, is there anything I'm overlooking before I update my data? But that's the process you would go through. Sometimes you will see five spouses out here because somebody merged the wrong people you've got wrong spouses. If you just take whatever ceiling and move it over, you're probably grabbing a ceiling that didn't belong to your family, that belonged to somebody else. So you want to come through and make sure you've lined up somebody in your family with the right person in Family Tree, so you're selecting from the right ceiling. It is also possible, is it, that Hannah Stone and William Woodcock could have been sealed in life at Saint, in St. George, or by proxy after they died, and then somebody may have repeated that sealing the spouse ordinance 30, 40, 50 years later, and indeed both dates apply to the same couple, just two different sealing dates for them. That, that, that's, that's a very common situation. And so your choice, we give you the choice of keeping what you have or updating it with what's in Family Tree. Right. Yeah, ba back when we used to read from New Family Search, we might have 30 or 40 of these, but now they don't let us show those anymore. We only show you the one that's currently in the temple system, which is only one. Okay, let's get back to the spouses and children. Back before we switched from New Family Search to Family Tree, we used to show you all of the duplication of these ordinances. 
And once we switched over to Family Tree several months ago, Family Tree no longer shows that. All we show you now is what's in the official temple record right now. We don't show you all the other duplication that's recorded elsewhere. There's not any over there or here. I mean, there's some over there. If there's none over here, then they will say ready, and you can go out and reserve ordinances to do at the temple. If that has real temple data and they're not over here, then you probably want to call Family Search Support and give them documentation on why you believe this temple work actually happened. And if they believe you, then they will update it. And if you don't convince them, then somebody's going to go do the temple work. Okay? All right, let's go back here. Okay, we're back up. Now, you were asking earlier, can we just link up all those children? It waits till you get to this screen. At this screen, you now can start doing various things. In fact, let me expand here on Sarah Woodcock, just at random. Notice you can hit these expander buttons and learn more about the relationship between this child and these parents. So we learn that she's a biological child. We learn when she was sealed to them. And um, if, if this is a bad relationship, this child never was part of the family. This was put in there bogus by somebody. Right here, you can actually delete this relationship and remove this person from this family. Yes. If, if you start doing anything the family tree, it's going to ask for an explanation. Up here, you can go review the sources between the couple in family tree and the couple in your database. Same with notes. You can exchange notes between the two marriages. Delete relationship will allow you to separate this person from this person. B please only do that if these two were never together in life. Somebody improperly merged. Somehow bad genealogy was done to put them together, and you're correcting it by separating them. But if you try to separate them by hitting delete relationship, if they have no children, it just separates them. If they have children, it's going to bring up a screen to say, what do we do with the kids? <laughs> I can't just separate them without moving the kids either to this parent or to that parent or essentially putting the child in to both parents as if it's a single parent situation. So you, you'll, you'll have some choices there and I'll cover that in the next class. In here I want to review that you have an option here to say, let's see, see that Betsy? She's not lined up with this Betsy but I'll bet she's the same person. There's a difference in spelling that kept these two from lining up properly. I can check this box and say, this Betsy and family tree matches this Betsy in my database. And now they're lined up. So for, for children who are not lined up yet, you have this box that has several purposes, one of which is to allow you to line up children. Similarly, if you, sometimes when you come in the screen, um, the families are not lined up yet. In fact, let me close this family for a second. Let's say that this family really belonged to this one. I would, because I've already linked the, the spouses, it's not going to let me easily unlink them, but I, I'd first have to unlink um, this spouse here, and I don't want to do that. But if you were to do that, then you'd have the option of, s the, this icon would change and allow you to say this family does not belong with this one, it belongs to the other one. You're allowed to adjust which families line up with each other, and, and f so the first step when you come in the screen is make sure your families are lined up. Once you get families lined up, then as you expand them, then you line up children. It does a pretty good job of automatically doing that, but wherever it misses, get them lined up by using the checkboxes. Once they're lined up, I can now say, hey, mark all. The mark all says link everybody who's lined up on the same line. John's not on my side. If I do some research and am convinced that he's legitimately a child in his family, I then want to move him into my family. If I don't believe he legitimately belongs to this family, I'm not going to bring him in and corrupt my database. But if I believe he is actually a child there, you click on the box and say, add him to the local family, and he's now ready to be added in.
get the child in the incubator first, then get married, right? <laughs> um, similarly, you didn't have to mark all. I could have, um, one at a time, I could have gone through here and said, link this guy or don't link that guy. As you check these boxes, it puts the link symbol in if you've decided you want to link them. But you can one at a time go through and examine some things and link them if you want. Similarly, if you have a bunch of people in your file, children, who are not in Family Tree, you will have check boxes there. You'll click on it and be given an option to add them to Family Tree. You always have to search first. It'll require you to do a match exercise to verify they're not out there. But once you've done that, you're free then to add those records to Family Tree. And as you do, it will link them into this family. Sometimes you will find, if, if you start to match a child here to Family Tree, it will find them, and yet they're not in this list of children, which means Family Tree has the person, they're just not part of this family. Once you say, hey, it's the same person, and you say go, it will actually, in Family Tree, connect them into this family. So you, you can use your database as a template to what Family Tree should look like as you move data around. When you're initially just kind of thinking through what to do and check on several boxes, things just don't happen. When you finally hit process, it comes up and says, okay, you just said you wanted to do the following. Let's review this. Make sure it's right. If it's wrong, you have a chance to b go back and fix it. If it's right, you commit the changes, and boom, everything happens. And we're about out of time. I'm not going to take the time to do that, so I'll just say back here. Let's see. I showed you how to link your own record, link or upload an individual record. While you're reviewing an individual, I showed you how to then link families. In the next class, we'll go through linking and uploading groups, which is a more complex thing, and it really speeds things up. Um, I will teach you how to import family lines, both ancestral lines and descendant lines. And we just added um, an ability to upload notes. You can select everybody in your database who's been linked and say, I want my notes out in Family Tree, and it'll just push them all out there. This ordinance reservation and tracking system, we're going to talk about, I forget where it is on the schedule, but that is one of the classes we'll teach here at the conference, but that'll be reserved for that class. It will only upload notes for people that are linked. Okay. It took us a while to kind of settle out the terminology, and so we kind of used some interchangeably here. We finally settled into the process of trying to match. Like when I clicked on this gray icon, and we were doing the initial match between your record and a corresponding record out in Family Tree, we call that linking. Once you found the match and you say, connect that record to my record, that's a link. You're establishing a link from your record to the corresponding Family Tree record. Right, that's, that's moving that number into your record. Then when you go back to that review screen and actually check boxes and say exchange data, that is what we call selective syncing. We're not getting both databases completely in sync with each other. We're letting you selectively exchange or selectively sync certain parts of data. So we never do a complete sync. We always do selective syncs. You're always in control. We don't do anything automatically. We wait for you to say, I want this done. And that's what we call syncing, is letting you choose, pick and choose what you want to transfer either from Family Tree to your data or from your data to Family Tree.